Hello and welcome to the task Projected Chopper. In this task we will look at two kinds of uh, projections. Uh, we've been using the perspective camera before with Teddy the case of field of view. Uh, but in this uh, practice session we also look at the uh, orthographic camera and uh, the perspective camera with different field of views. Most of the applications use the uh, perspective camera because it looks uh, realistic. For example, uh, video games, uh, first person shooters, or rendering uh, some uh, realistic scenes. Perspective camera is uh, the best projection to use in those cases. But the orthographic camera is useful when we need to see if two lines are uh, parallel with each other. For example, uh, 3 d uh, computer aided design programs such as Fusion 360 or uh, KiCad, those need uh, to show the user if two lines are parallel. In this task, we will be creating a scene with a chopper in the middle that has the perspective uh, projection. And in the corner, we will have a secondary viewport uh, that uh, cycles between three autographic views of the chopper. First is from the front, the second is on, uh, from the top, and uh, one is from the side of the chopper. And uh, for that, we'll use a scissor test. If you look at the code, it looks pretty much exactly the same as the previous one. Uh, so uh, the first thing you should do is copy your vertex and uh, fragment shader, as well as your uh, chopper code. And if you have copied your code, uh, the output should look something like this. Uh, maybe you will have some shading here or uh, uh, more fancy chopper, but you should have a chopper here. Then, uh, then we have two cameras now. The first camera is the perspective camera that uh, we have been using in previous tasks. Now it uses the field of view uh, global variable, which we have set to 80. But now we also have a camera 2, which is an orthographic camera. And orthographic camera has uh, three, six uh, inputs. We have first four inputs up, uh, from the size, which is six, uh, and then uh, the near and far plane, like the same as the perspective camera. So let me show you quickly what those uh, numbers mean. If we have our camera here, and uh, we have a cube that we want to render onto the screen, then uh, the orthographic uh, projection, let's say that this is the screen, the first four, the first four uh, arguments are about the size of this viewport. So how far uh, are, they, uh, are the edges of the screen from the center. So that would be the size and minus size and on the other axis as well. And uh, now uh, the autographic projection projects so that all the uh, vectors are orthogonal to the projection plane. So there will be no projection like in perspective uh, projection. Also the near and far plane would be uh, one unit from the camera, so somewhere here maybe, and until 1000. So anything further than 1000 can't be seen and anything uh, closer than one also can't be seen. Going back to the code, after defining camera 2, uh, we have to change the camera mode to zero, which is the default uh, camera mode for our secondary viewport. Uh, but uh, there are two, two more modes uh, which we have to implement for the task. Then we had the camera to the scene, we had our hangar, we had our, had our chopper, and uh, then we called the draw function. But we also have uh, this code here. This code will uh, control the, the uh, field of view of our, uh, of our perspective camera. Uh, with the arrow left and arrow right keys. So uh, here you have to uh, first uh, change our global variable FOV and then we have to call, uh, call the change uh, main camera phone and uh, give, give the field of view as an argument to it. And the camera mode uh, is uh, changed in this function. It takes in the mode that we want to change it into and then we also have uh, the camera mode global variable. Uh, so we, we check if it's the same. If it's the same, then we do nothing. When, but when it's different, then we change the camera mode. So what we do is we change the camera's uh, tools up vector and uh, position. 
after changing the open position, uh, we also change the uh, direction that the camera is looking at with the look at function, and it will always look at the position 0, minus 5, 0. Uh, finally, we update the global variable as well. Here is the change main camera field of view function that you will have to implement yourself. And uh, let's finally look at the pro function. Here you have to copy your rotation codes, uh, and then we start with the rendering. So uh, we are already rendering the camera one with the, with this, uh, these lines of code, uh, but we can actually change to the camera two and see what it looks like currently. So uh, with these settings here, up vector is at uh, zero one zero, the position is at uh, zero minus five and uh, fifteen, and it looks like this position. Then we see this projection. We see that uh, we only see uh, one face of the cube because uh, all the other faces are either uh, behind this uh, face, so the other other side of the cube, or they are uh, perpendicular to our projection plane, so we can't see it. Same with the floor, so there should be a floor here, but we can't see it because it's perpendicular to our uh, point of view. And this blackness here is, is the void. Uh, we can't uh, see anything because there is nothing there, so it's below the floor. And also we see that the copper is uh, stretched. This is because uh, we defined the uh, projection plane to be a square, but our viewport is not a square, so, so it will stretch it. But uh, let's turn it back to camera one and uh, let's see what the task is here. So here we have to uh, render our uh, secondary viewport and uh, that secondary viewport has to be a square, so 150 and 150. And it also has to be located at the bottom right corner, so uh, over here. Uh, we see that we, ha we can use this function here to set the viewport. Let's set it to 0, 0 for now, and width is 150, and height is also 150, so it's a square. So there is no error anymore. Then uh, we, we had to do the scissor test here, but uh, we also had to render the secondary camera, and we used the same uh, method as with the camera one, but now instead we use the camera two. Uh, but we see that everything turned black except this uh, corner here. So uh, uh, this is because we are not doing the scissor test yet. Uh, it will just overwrite all the pixels on the screen, and since we haven't defined these pixels uh, here, they all uh, are by default black. But if we want to selectively change the pixels, then we have to do the scissor test. So. We have to use this function here. This should be the same as the viewport. So if we save, still nothing. And this is because we haven't uh, enabled the scissor test yet. So if you look at back uh, for the camera one, we uh, disabled the scissor test. So now we have to uh, enable it. This function. And now both of the viewports are uh, visible at the same time. So your task is to move this uh, viewport here to here and also uh, change the camera mode, change camera mode function so it will rotate between three different perspectives. You can also see that in the draw function every three seconds the camera mode will be changed. So for the first three seconds it's uh, in, in the mode zero, then it's in mode one and then it's in mode two. And then it will cycle back to zero. One more thing about the uh, up vector is uh, beware of this value. The up vector uh, determines the role of the camera. So, for example, if I change the uh, x uh, coordinate of the up vector to 1 and save, we see that the uh, orthographic projection is tilted now. One of the cases that is strange is if the up vector is uh, collinear with the look at uh, vector. Uh, if that's the case, 3GS uh, actually adds a small offset to this uh, vector. So uh, it will uh, get a random uh, row. But for example, in WebShell or OpenShell, there, was, there are no uh, checks for it. So in that case, uh, there will be a, there will be a like, uh, division by infinity. And don't forget to implement this part of the code that changes the field of view of our uh, perspective camera. And after that, the task should be complete. So good luck.